Hello and welcome to episode 28 of the Bex Creates podcast. My name is Bex and I'm coming to you from a sunny Bristol where I live with my partner Paul and our Norwegian forest cat Mufasa. Um, so I feel a bit rusty, I've not done it this way for a very long time. Um, but I thought, seeing as I've, I've been a bit patchy with my uh, sort of vlog casting for a while and um, I've got my operation coming up finally, woohoo. Um, so I thought I'd do a proper episode to kind of clear the decks and then go from there. So yeah, I'm, I'm finally got a, a date for my operation. I'm going in in 15 days time. So um, there's lots of preparations going on here to try and make my recovery as smooth as possible, to make things as uh, easy as possible for Paul, because he'll be working and looking after me. And yeah, just make it okay and, and get my head around it. Um, so I'll talk about my plans sort of for podcasting, etc during my recovery a bit later on but I've got some whips to share with you some quite a lot of finished objects and only a couple of acquisitions not much really so yeah I might as well just crack on so I've got loads of socks to show you so I'm going to start with my most recent pair of Rainbow Chronicles socks so these were I'm losing where we are with months now these were the June yeah, they weren't in July, see, told you. Um, the July socks, which were blue. So here they are. You will have seen them as a work in progress anyway. And I loved knitting these. They were my fastest Rainbow Chronicles to date. They were done inside a week. So I did a uh, two by one twisted rib on these. Um, and then I used the... Uh, whistle down pattern from the uh, Bridgerton collection by Twin Set and Pearl my lovely Rachel um these were lovely because it's like nice quick bit of lace and then stocking it and I think they just make the most of this gorgeous gorgeous yarn which was a one of a kind from Tracy at Somerset Yarns um just utterly gorgeous it's, it's busy but the pattern still shows up well but then obviously it really sings in stockinette. So those worked really, really well. I'm really happy with those. And of course I knit my little mini to go with. Um, so yeah, cracking on with those, those colours now. We're uh, almost in August. So the colour for August is purple. And then after that, it's kind of filling in gaps in the, in the colour wheel. So at the end of this, well, when I finish next month's pair, I'll have the full rainbow which is really exciting um my next finished object is just a pair of vanilla socks i won't bother wrestling on them onto the blockers because they're just vanilla and these were um I, well they're the next pair in the friends um collection from the dotty wool company these are they were april i think so um and the color was called how you doing? <laughs> Gotta say it like that, you have to. Um, I enjoyed this colour more than I thought I was going to actually. Um, these two colours are actually, this isn't actually one wide yellow stripe, it is very, 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 very subtly different. But I quite like the effect that gives and I managed to match them up perfectly, which rarely happens around here. I'm kind of not careful enough. Um, so yeah, not too much to say about those because those were nice and easy. And then my final uh, pair of finished socks for today are actually a new design that are coming out next weekend. So um, I was inspired actually by the yarn in these. So Claire gave me the yarn. So it's Bird Street yarn in the Lysianthus colourway. And I've always loved it and never got around to knitting anything in it. So Claire gave me a skein and I was inspired to knit these socks. So I've actually called them Lysianthus socks. So if I show you, it's hard to show you these on a blocker. They're all the details sort of front and back. So you've got this pattern that runs all the way down the leg and foot. And it kind of reminded me of the shape of a Lysianthus flower because they kind of spiral round. So it kind of was reminiscent of that for me. And then it also goes down the back of the leg. And then I've done this little detail 
down the side, which I really like, and that looks really nice on. Um, really enjoyable to knit. The lace is really simple. I've had some great feedback from my testers on this one, and uh, one of my testers, Nancy. Hi, Nancy, if you're watching. She's an absolute superstar test knitter. Um, I'm not even going to give you her... Um, her Ravelry name just in case you steal her um, <laughs> she said to me that she was a newbie lace knitter but she loved knitting these and it's got her hooked on knitting lace socks so it's really good if you're just starting out with lace knitting and I've given you a few tips in the pattern to make sure that you can get this detail as effective as possible so hopefully you'll like those like i said those will be out on sunday the first of august and do check out my um instagram for a discount code so i'll put my instagram name underneath the video so that you can find me if you don't know where i am already um okay next whip uh, sorry finished object is a big one I'm so excited about this. Look. It's my rainbow blanket. So, um, this blanket is the one I've been making with the mini skeins from the Rainbow Chronicles by Lay Family Yarns. And Kelly announced the other day that sort of the rainbow colours are kind of done now. And that the last few colours would be kind of grey and then autumnal colours and then something Christmassy. So I thought, right, I think she sort of designed that to be the border but I I've never envisaged putting a border on this blanket I don't really do borders on blankets um I don't like how long they take and I don't feel that it adds very much so I'm happy with mine the way it is so I'm going to stop it here and then the rest of the minis I will use for something else so it's hard to show you this because it's massive but Look, you can see all the colours here. So I used the um, the 20 gram mini packs. So there was five each month. If I show you it folded in half, that might be easier. So it's, I'd say it's a very generous lap size. It's not as big as a single bed, but it's nice and wide and nice and long, if you get what I mean. So yes, I've got all the colours and I faded them each time from the, the darkest to the lightest. And I just love them. I love this blanket. It's just beautiful. And I tell you what, I'm so happy that I'm going to have this for my recovery. That I can snuggle up on the sofa when I'm feeling a bit sore and poorly. Not on the sofa, on my specially adapted chair. Um, and I feel like I'm getting a hug from Kelly. Which, let's face it, are the best hugs. So yeah, looking absolutely gorgeous i'm really excited to um snuggle under this with my goddaughter and read her stories she will love it i just think it's just it's just the most joyful thing let's hope let's hope that youtube pick one of these nice pictures now from my thumbnail because what youtube usually does is laugh at me and picks the most awful thing of me like scratching my nose or coughing or something like that it always picks me like with my mouth wide open or something really hideous hideously unflattering so let's see and before you tell me i can choose my thumbnail i can't because i upload from my iphone and it doesn't give you the option on there it only does if you do it via the website <laughs> i've tried okay so moving on to works in progress with that one crochet blanket finished I can now put a lot of energy into my other one which is my Bird Street blanket and as you can see it has grown quite considerably so I've done so far I've done three rows of 12 so I've done 36 squares I'm using drops Nord for the grey ones and I found that uh, one ball of 50 grams does 15 squares so that's pretty good going um, and then I'm just alternating as I go, choosing the colours, seeing what looks nice, you know, what I fancy next, you know, does it need to be a speckly one or a more solid one or a pastely one or a deeper one? And just enjoying putting the colours together, really. So, yes, yeah, doing well. I, like I said before, I've, I've stuck at 12 squares per row for now, but I am envisaging a bigger blanket than this, although that's a good, good lap size blanket. But 
I didn't want to like make the rose massively long and then commit to it. So I thought if I make it kind of a manageable size and then add to the edges and build it up until I'm happy with it, I think that's going to be better. So yeah, I just keep this beside my chair and every now and then I just do a square. Um, it's not as easy to just like pick up while you're watching the telly this one because you do need to look where the stitches are going you know a granny stripe i can feel it but with this it's a bit more precise so and so the whole way going in is smaller so um yeah it's kind of a bit more of a it's not concentrated because i can, i know exactly what i'm doing but i have to watch i can't for example watch loads of olympics while i'm um making this one which I've been doing a lot over the last couple of, of days um, because, yeah, you look down to do a square and then somebody's won a medal and you've missed it. <laughs> so, yeah, but I'm really looking forward to carrying on working on that. Um, Claire and John are doing the Southern War Show in September and I'd ideally like to get a few more rows on it so it's a bit substantial so they could take it with them to show some swatches. So I just have to see how big I can get it by then, really. I could, well... It all depends on how I am, doesn't it? Because it's in early September. We shall see. Okay. My next whip is in a new acquisition. This gorgeous bag. I just could not resist. Look at it. How cute is that? It's called, I think it's called Women of the World. And I just thought that was awesome. Um, and this is from Amelia Joy on Etsy. And I've got one of her bags. Um, it was in a Christmas fabric. And I really like the shape because these, these ones with a round bottom and a drawstring and they kind of sit really nicely. They're just quite pleasing, quite a nice shape. So, And she's absolutely, utterly, ridiculously good value for money. I don't want to say cheap, but um, she could charge a lot more for her bags. They are beautiful. Um, she's got this lovely rainbow tag as well, which I really loved. Um, so yeah, do check her out if you haven't checked her out before. But sitting in here, this is a bit of a sneak peek. Um, it is, so I'm just grabbing a sock blocker. It is um, a prototype for a new design and it's not gonna stay like this. I've already decided I'm not quite happy with it and there are some bits I'm gonna tweak. So I won't tell you too much about it and it is sort of a collaboration as well. Um, or will be a collaboration, it's not yet. Um, so I'll just show you it, but it's not going to stay like this. So uh, I won't tell you too much detail. So as you can see, it's a lace sock. I've tried something a bit different out with the cuff and there's lace detail and I've done some little lace motifs down here, um, but there's some bits I'm not happy with. So I'm going to adjust it a little bit. So I've done the first sock and I am almost finish the second sock I just measured it and I think it was about 12 inches and I'd go to 14 before I put the toe on so very close with that um I'm very keen to get that finished because I've got some more yarn coming this week which is um yarn support from a really exciting new dyer really exciting um and I'm going to be designing a sock with her yarn um, so I want some stuff with the needle so the second it arrives I can get it going because I know what I'm going to do. I've, I've sampled something and I've I've written up the pattern, um, the first draft. So I'd be really keen to try and get that done before I go into hospital. Um, next whip is in my lovely ollie and bella bag from sheree this bag just makes me smile so much it's so summery and fun and also it's really squishy so i really like it and also it's from sheree so obviously i love it um in here i am knitting the may uh friends club yarn sorry it's got cat hair on it um and i love the colors of this one so pretty and this one was called now i've got to get this right hang on if i got the tag i've got the tag this was called they don't know that we know that they know we know it's one of my favorite episodes of friends um i can't remember the number season five anyway and so i thought that i would knit this one in one of my own patterns because 
quite often I don't end up keeping my pattern samples I end up giving them as gifts so I thought it would be nice to have a pair for myself and I thought it would be good to try this pattern in um, stripy yarn and it's worked really well so this is my Liberty lace pattern and as you can see it's had a really nice effect on the striping yarn so you've got the detail at the back on both sides I think it's better off on the blocker to be honest and I love the way the increases and decreases have kind of created a slight sort of scallop chevron kind of effect so really liking those and again I'm very close on this one um I think I've done one, two, three, four, five, six repeats out of 18 on the foot. So, um, motoring along now too. You can see where I finished the leg, carrying on down the foot. Um, so really, I would hope that in the next couple of days, I'll have these and the other ones done. Um, I'm also really keen to start on Friday, no, not Friday, Sunday the 1st of August start my Rainbow Chronicles socks nice and quickly I'd like to get those done before I go into hospital on the 11th so that I can get set up for the September ones because it would be very easy for me to do that then um okay my next work in progress this is one that um keeps getting put to one side every now and again it's slow progressing but i am enjoying it um so this is i'm afraid it's not a pattern that's kind of available to everyone so my lovely friend joe i did show this in the last episode i'm sure my lovely friend joe who is um jojo butler um she sort of designed this top for herself just sort of experimenting and i loved it so she sort of wrote up a recipe for me to use so I don't know that she's planning on releasing it, although she really should because it's really beautiful. And it's actually based on the same lace pattern that Rachel used in the Whistle Down socks. And um, it's a bottom up garment, which I haven't done many of in the past, but that's fine. It doesn't have sleeves, it just kind of has ribbon. Um, so this is where I'm up to so far. And I'm loving it. It's actually making me want to knit on it again. You know? It's got this lovely um, rib. The rib is carried on up the sides, which I think just gives things like this a really sort of professional edge and like nice detail. Um, I was a bit unsure of what to do about the yarn because I had this yarn to, um, to use in stash, um, which is west yorkshire spinner's exquisite lace in the belgravia colorway and this is great because it's such good value for money and it's lovely it's really soft um but joe actually used a light fingering so hers was 600 meters to 100 grams um whereas this is 800 meters to 100 grams and i ummed and ahed and it's hard to find yarn that is a light fingering and I really wanted to choose this yarn I had so what I've done in the end is I've held it double so I know that makes it fingering weight but I figure um I've, I think I've gone up a needle size have I can't see yeah and I also it's got 12 inches of positive ease so if I lose an inch or two or three or four I'm not going to mind too much. It's not like it's fitted and it's going to be extra tight. So I'm just going with it. If it fits me, great. If it doesn't, I'll give it to somebody else. But um, it's just really, really pretty. I don't think I'm going to have it finished in time to wear it this summer. But it'd be lovely to put away for next summer. Um, I think I'll find it hard to wear anyway because this summer because after my op I'm going to be very 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 swollen so it's going to be kind of loose dresses and leggings and things like that little tops and like nice jeans aren't going to really be on the cards for a while so it's fine it'll be something to look forward to but I'm really really enjoying that it's just um again it kind of it's it's simple in that the, the pattern repeats are like seven stitches so it's not loads to remember 
but if you make a mistake, you kind of got to pick that quite a long way because it's a lot of stitches. So again, I kind of do need to be able to concentrate quite well to work on that one. I tried working on it when I was watching an episode of something and I made a mistake almost straight away, so put it down. My goodness, I'm not used to talking this much. My throat's going all dry. Okay, right then, moving on. I think you'll be impressed with the amount of progress I've made on my Find Your Fade. So this is obviously a shawl by Andrea Mallory. It's my second one. And actually it came up on Time Pop the other week. That I think it's been three years since I made my last one or was it even four? I can't remember. It was a long time ago anyway. So I started off with um, Jellyfish by Somerset Yarns, which is like one of my favourite colours of this year. This one, sorry, one of my hair is on it this time. This one is a uh, powder puff from Beehive Yarns. And it has faded so beautifully into this one. Because you can see, you can hardly see the transition of colour. But the speckles just start fading in. And this one is another of my favourites. It's um, Arizona by uh, Somerset Yarns again. And then I'm just transitioning into Rave by Somerset Yarns. And that's really cool because the speckles just sort of all intermingle and eventually change colour. So I'm really pleased with the way the colours are playing with each other so far. Now, I think I said when I started this, I was quite intrigued to see how big it would come out because it's obviously been a while since I knit that last one. And I know that I knit that one down a needle size, which I think was, hmm, I can't remember, hang on, let me have a look. I feel like I did it on 3.75, or maybe it was 3.5. She suggests, oh no, she suggests 3.5, and I think I did my last one on 3.25, that's right. Because I didn't want it quite so big, because everyone was complaining how massive it was. So I knit it down, and that was a really nice size for me. It's still big, um, but it seemed really good size. <clears throat> so I thought, Okay, this time I kind of preferred for it to be slightly bigger, so I might knit it as written and do it on a 3.5, but it would appear that my tension has got loads tighter, which is really odd because aren't you supposed to re relax and get looser as, as you get more experienced as a knitter? I don't know. But um, as a result, I got my old one out to measure it the other day, and that has been blocked, but this was exactly the same size, so it will come out. A touch bigger when it's blocked um but i'm just happy it's no smaller really so that's good so yeah i'm really enjoying this i'd forgotten what a simple pattern it is and how sort of rhythmic and enjoyable it is and really and i'm at now at the point where the rows don't get any longer so it's perfectly manageable i think it's just over 200 stitches so it's not like oh my god you know those shawls where you get to near the edge and it's like 400 stitches per row and it's like Right, if I've got half an hour to do one row, it's a bit soul destroying, isn't it? So this one's a really, really good shape. And I think Andrea Marie's constructions are just really clever and a bit different and very wearable. So loving this. And that should be finished in time to enjoy in the winter. I think it'll be finished, if not this month, then well, not July, if not August and September. So yeah, really enjoying that. So, um, I don't have loads in the way of acquisitions. I've been trying to um, use up stash and I've had loads of stash because Claire keeps very kindly um, loading me up with um, with sort of seconds and bits and pieces that she's got lying around. So one of which was this one, which is their Summer Breeze colourway, which as you can see is absolutely gorgeous, but somehow it got an accidental grey blob on it which might look a bit of a problem on here but once that's that's caked up that will be like a couple of grey speckles every now and again so it really won't be a problem I won't mind at all and I get to use this beautiful beautiful yarn so I'd much rather that than let it go to waste there's some absolutely gorgeous speckles in here look at that I don't know what this is going to be but I'm going to enjoy knitting it that's for sure it's lovely okay and then as you know I'm doing my little uh, mini swap with jewels this year 
so she's just sent me the next well actually the last two um which is this one was turquoise which was oh i don't know now june yeah turquoise for june which she said this one is a g and c by betsy makes i've never had any of sam's yarn before so that's nice to try and it is really pretty very a g and c lovely and then this one the blue for july is putney irises by little taylor s i'm guessing it's one of amy's um more sort of uh older colours before she changed to dandelion and dogwood but again really pretty so I need to get those wound and make the mini socks she also sent me the cutest little note card how sweet is that Jules always sends me little things and makes me smile um so yeah that's kind of everything for today so here's the plan so I'm going to be going into hospital on the 11th, as I said, and I should be in there for about five days or so. And then for a couple of weeks, I'm going to be very immobile and in quite a lot of pain. So I don't think you'll see much of me then. Um, what I am planning to do, and I've been toying with this idea for a really long time, was I was thinking about sort of vlogging my progress, sort of my preparation building up to my operation, and then my progress afterwards, because um i thought it'd be really good for me to see um how far i'd come you know on those days when i feel like i'm getting nowhere because it is going to be a long slow recovery um uh to keep you guys updated because you're all lovely and you all i know you're all interested um and also you guys can um you can give me little pep talks then you can <laughs> you can leave your encouraging comments and and help me along but the the idea you know i've been toying with it but the idea was kind of confirmed last week when i was sort of i was encouraged to watch some videos about recovery by my occupational therapist to kind of help me you know do as well as i possibly can and i actually stumbled across a video diary of a girl who had had the same operation not very long ago and actually it was really good to see where she was sort of especially the first few days after her surgery I find it really useful so I thought you know even if one person stumbles stumbles across my videos and finds finds the video of my recovery useful then that would be good so I thought that's what I might do and then intersperse that with what I'm knitting along the way um to kind of keep it all in one place really so i'm going to see how it goes i filmed some bits already about the preparation um you know we're having some sort of things done around the house to make uh everything accessible and comfortable and safe for me um i'm also cooking like a mad thing filling up the freezer because i won't be able to cook for seven weeks afterwards and for anyone who knows me that's quite tricky because I do really love cooking and I put a lot of effort into our meals and I cook from scratch every day and yeah and with Paul working you know it's, it's a lot of pressure on him so filling up the freezer um so there's a few of my favorite recipes are going to be on there um and preparing projects because I won't be able to wind yarn it's gonna be really hard for me to say to Paul right go upstairs and find the yarn that's like pink with yellow speckles and <laughs> it's just not gonna happen um so I've got lots of projects ready with yarn needles patterns in a project bag easily accessible so if I want to start something new and what I've done as well is is put together some sort of tiny projects things like dishcloths and mini socks and stuff like that so that if I'm not feeling great and I just want a little something or something simple to knit on then I can do that so I've got lots of different options so yeah that's kind of the plan so I've got a few more days of freedom now and then um, I will be going to isolation next week just to absolutely make sure that there is no risk of my operation getting cancelled i the hospital have only asked me to isolate for a few days but i think in the current uh climate with the numbers going up as they are i think i'm safer just to stay at home so i might i might fit in another episode next week who knows but as it stands i think the next time you see me will probably be 
hey stop so um thanks for sticking with me i've really enjoyed being back in front of the camera like this it's, it's nice to do a proper episode now and again um i hope you've enjoyed too and i will see you hopefully all uh mended and and recovering in a few weeks time so thanks for watching take care and i'll see you soon